And now, on This Week in History, with Paul Waite. Hello. Hello. It's on This Week in History, and I am... Why are you waving at me? Waving you. You're putting me off. Hello. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to call the camera Drew from now on. (laughs) So it's like being at Old Trafford with the floodlights shining (laughs) on me. I don't know how I'm supposed to work in such conditions. (laughs) Anyway, welcome to this week's version of On This Week in History. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And this week we have another vast array of facts mm. and we're going all the way back to 44 bc to start Whoa. with yeah so in 44 bc one of the greatest men in history i think undoubtedly mm-hmm. and certainly one of the most famous i would think mm-hmm. probably one of the most famous 10 people we said to people you know so in 44 bc julius caesar was stabbed to death mm-hmm. ah. and of course uh, william shakespeare has also immortalized uh, Julius Shakespeare's life in, uh, in in his play, imaginatively called Julius Caesar. <laughs> uh, and of course, uh, as he lay dying, he is supposed to have said, A tu brute. Um, for those of you who don't know much about that period, uh, it's um, it was very interesting. Uh, so in the period leading up to probably about 40 uh, BC, uh, you had uh, Pompey, um, um, Pompey Crassus, etc in a great struggle for power mm. uh, and ultimately uh marcus uh, Ju- julius caesar prevailed of course originally uh with his great mate Mar- mark anthony mm-hmm. um of course my brother's named after him yeah which is yeah which is quite amusing anyway so um chuntering on far too long got too much to do so we now go all the way through to 180 a.d to something that's very dear to mine and callum's hearts so the great Marcus Aurelius died in 180. Marcus Aurelius, one of the great writers of all time. So um, uh, a lot of people have his uh, prose and his poetry, a very wise man. And, of course, his son was Callum. Commodus. Commodus. uh, And Commodus became uh, the emperor at the age of 18. Uh, So, of course, in Gladiator, um, rather imaginatively, Commodus murders uh, his father. But in reality, he didn't do that. No. But what is true is obviously Commodus was a very poor emperor. Yeah, and like his father, And yeah. um, he did, for instance, fight in the arena, it's true. Yeah. Uh, and he did preside over massive bloodshed mm-hmm. um, in, in the Colosseum. So he basically his idea to be popular was giving people what, what he thought they wanted. Mm. So um, if you haven't checked out Gladiator, in my opinion, it's one of the best two films of all time. Uh, next, one of my great heroes. I think this is. I, I, I never really. Un- I, I still don't understand. I need to do some more reading about this. Uh, one of the great. Uh, one of the great characters, I suppose, of English history, Walter Raleigh. Mm-hmm. So Walter Raleigh, also a West Country man from mm-hmm. Devon, um, and um, he met his demise um, two years, I think, after what happened today um, at the hands of James the Sixth. Um, so Walter Raleigh was obviously one of Elizabeth the First's great heroes, um, very instrumental in the Battle of the Armada. So in 1616, he he was released from the Tower of London, where he'd been held prisoner, I think, for five years at this point, because um, he convinced uh, the king that there was uh, masses of gold in, I think it was in Guyana. So he was let out with a big fleet. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we'll come on to see, ultimately, he failed and... Uh, it led to his execution. I just, just, I just don't. Why, why? You know, why did you do that? I mean, people don't deserve to be executed because they can't find gold. Anyway, yeah. Um, Seventeen hundred and seventy-four. Parliament passes the first of the, um, of the uh, what are called the Intemable Acts, um, which led to the American Revolution. Uh, it's actually called. This specific legislation was called the Boston, uh, the Boston Party Act. Closed the harbor. Uh, basically closed Boston Harbour until such time as the colonists paid for the damage they caused at the Boston Tea Party. Mm-hmm. And, of course, basically the the, 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 the colonists basically said, booger off. Sorry, mm. said that again. Sorry. Um, no, we're not going to do that. And yet. So, yet, yet. Yet, we're not mm. going to do this. So it obviously led to a lot of trouble. Um, 1800, Alessandro Volta discovers the electric battery. So Ooh. that's a clearly... And, of course, uh, Volta, it became Volts. Mm-hmm. Volts named after Volta. Ah. Um, in 1815, Napoleon enters Paris after escaping from Elba, where he was, of course, first imprisoned. Yep. And he then uh, was the emperor again for exactly 100 days. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, until, of course, he met his demise at Waterloo. You were defeated, you short little Frenchman. Um, Corsican. 
it was a Corsican. Very good. We, we had this discussion before. Yeah. Corsican. Uh, when at, at that time, Corsica was actually part of Italy, which is a and a final one um, in this first part. It means something to me. This in eighteen hundred and thirty four. Six farm labourers from Tollpuddle were sentenced to be transported to Australia for forming a trade union. Um, so these people are known as the Tollpuddle Martyrs, uh, one of the most famous um, group of people to find rebelists, we're going to call them in history, in my opinion. Uh, the reason why, apart from the fact I studied the Tollpuddle Martyrs at school as, as one of my projects, um, one of my great clients, I loved uh, a guy called... Uh, George Dudman, uh, used to live a mile from Tollpuddle. So every time I had to go and see him, I actually went past Tollpuddle. And so I used to think about the Tollpuddle Martyrs all the time. So there we are. Hope you enjoyed that first part. Lots of really important things, I think. On This Week in History. Welcome back to On This Week in History. And this is episode two of mm. three of this week's mm. Tasty Little Facts, going up to March the 20th. So, what do we have in the first thing? If I can get my chronology correct, in 1872, we had the first ever FA Cup final. Oh, well. I know quite a lot about this because when I was a little boy, I used to read uh, a lot about uh, football history. Um, and the Wanderers defeated the Royal Engineers 1 0 at the Kennington Oval, oh, okay. which of course is now the cricket ground. Um, so, um, people like the Wanderers, the Carthusians, Etonians, uh, and the Royal Engineers dominated the first 10. Mm. Um, finals before it became something closer to to what we know today people like Preston North End you know mm -hmm. um, getting involved etc um, and then we have where do we have next then Paul have a look 1907 uh, Finland became the first European country to give women the vote okay uh, I watched a really good program on Finland this week with the Hairy Bikers. Oh, um, we like the Hairy and Bikers. It's, yeah. it's really interesting. Uh, you know, <laughs> F Finland for three years in a row is officially the greatest place in the world to live. Mm. It's won three years I'd in a row. Happiest. I'd like to live there. Um, happiest, mm. uh, smartest, but most intelligent. You know, officially cleanest. Um, uh, quite wealthy, twelfth most wealthy country mm. per capita. Um, Have you ever been to Finland? Two, this is true. Two hundred and twelfth most dense. Densely populated. Mm. So there's only about 20 countries in the world who are least densely populated. 5.5 yeah, yeah. million people living in a country bigger than England. Wow. I'd, I'd like to live in Finland. Nice bit, nice bit of space. That's nice my bit of no, no, I haven't been to Finland, Drew. Mm. Sorry, I will answer should your we, question. Should we all go on a holiday to Finland? We should. Yeah, I, think should that, I think that sounds quite funky, doesn't it? Yeah. Hot plunges. So, yeah. Tall plunges. 1917. Uh, three more USA merchant ships were sunk. Uh, by the Germans, of course, so they said the Nazis, of course, they weren't Nazis then, they were just, the Germans actually were pretty awful in the First World War as well, more mm. than people re realise. So you had um, uh, liners with women and children, um, American merchant ships sunk by e-boats uh, willy-nilly, um, and R Woodrow Wilson, who was the uh, president at the time, he basically met with his cabinet and he basically said, this is enough, enough is enough. Yeah. Um, you know, the Germans are just basically... You know, Killing people at will. Yeah, we've got to do something about it. So, this is a really interesting one. In 1920, uh, the first ever flight from London to South Africa. Now, have a guess how long it took. I couldn't believe this. Hmm, in those days. It's ridiculous. I, 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 I don't know why, you know. Oh, it's totally I, I, ridiculous. To be honest, I wouldn't even want to hazard a guess. One and a half months. What? Yeah, it took one and a half months. And I was sitting there thinking, well, you could have got there in a, in a boat quicker than that, surely. Mm. You know? So how how many stops did they take? Well, was I don't know. We'll have to do some research. Stopped in Paris and stopped in freaking we, southern we, France. We will and then... have to do some research. Um, this 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 will be another interesting one because this is this is a part of history that um, people just don't understand quite how widespread British influence was in the world. So until 1922, Egypt was part of the UK. You know, effectively. Mm. So in 1922, Egypt achieved independence from the UK. But our troops remained. Okay. So um, yeah, this, you, would, you just wouldn't think that, would you? No. 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 no nowadays, we're bike. not very popular in Egypt, do we? I don't know. I don't know if that's true, actually. Uh, um, well, it's quite dangerous to go there, isn't it? Maybe. It's a dangerous tourist destination. <laughs> oh, I did. I did. I, I missed two little facts, which are well, th three facts, actually. Um, so in 1877, uh, Australia beat England by 45 runs in the world's first ever cricket test match. Um, and uh, then we have, let's see, we've got two here. Uh, yes, in 1915, Pluto was photographed for the first time. 
By Mickey Mouse, actually. <laughs> Bruno, Bruno, I'm photographing you for the first time. Oh, thank you, Mickey. I hope he had his consent. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to do a program about Pluto when we get when Aspen Wake properly, you know, becomes a proper current affairs and Aspen news Wake Galaxy. Thingy, then um, mm-hmm. I'm going to do something. I like Pluto a lot. I know. You and finally, uh, something I know a lot about because I have Gandhi is maybe my greatest hero of all time, other than Churchill. Really? Yeah, definitely. Greatest. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Gandhi, great man. You, you are honoured. Yeah, mm-hmm. great man. Um, I've watched the film uh, enormous number of times, so very interesting. This. Uh, Effectively, um, in 1922, British magistrates in India sentenced uh, Gandhi to six years in prison for disobedience. Of course, one of the reasons I revere him so much is uh, all all of his disobedience was, of course, peaceful. Mm. Uh, he, he, he violently objected to violence. <laughs> so perhaps I shouldn't have said violently objected. So mm. he, it was, and I, th- I think the one, the one, I think for someone that when you consider that some of the things that were done to the Indians by the British, and you know, just, you know such as the massacre, you know, whether where you had what was it, thousand children and women machine gunned down, you know, by. Uh, by a regiment, by a crazy general, you know, mm. who didn't know what he was doing. Um, so, um, you know, I think his his forbearance was remarkable and uh, has gained my respect. Bringing you the news of old on This Week in History with Paul Waite. I am Paul Waite and this is still On This Week in History. Part three, baby. Part three. Thank you very much for that <laughs> wizard sleep. <laughs> One that was so things, smooth, wasn't it? One of the good things about being a wizard, of course, he knows exactly what's going to happen mm. for at least the next three seconds. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to say something interesting about people's attention spans and a goldfish in a minute, something I, I learned this week. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, it particularly applies to Drew. In 1930, <laughs> KFC was founded by Colonel Sanders. Sanders. I have to say, I'm quite partial to a KFC. Was he actually then. a colonel? Mm, yeah. Lovely. Was he? He yeah. was a colonel in the U.S. military. Well, that was his name. So from Kentucky. Do I guess he must have been Callum? You know, liked his chicken. <laughs> 1939 caused a lot of trouble. This the Germans occupied Czechoslovakia, mm. or actually um, Sudetenland. More, Sudetenland, which means the Southland, mm. I think, in, in Southland. German. Um, and of course, just um, to, to give a bit of facts to this. So ac- across Europe, as a result, largely of the Treaty of Versailles in 1919. Um, former lands across Europe where um, indigenous Germans lived uh, were basically taken away from the German Empire and uh, put into other countries. So you had um, Alsace, for instance, mm-hmm. had been in Germany for 50, 60 years on and off, uh, put back into France. Uh, Sudetenland uh, put into uh, a, a very contrived Czech. country called Czechoslovakia, mm. which, of course, um, ultimately couldn't stay together because the Czechs and the Slovaks themselves mm, had different. massive cultural differences. Yeah, yeah. And, of course, um, the invasion of Czechoslovakia, I suppose, effectively... That was the start of the war, really, wasn't it? ...started the war. Yeah. It made it, it almost impossible for the war not to happen, I would say. Um, and then we have, in 1956, Tunisia gains independence from France. Mm. Or, uh, in French, is Tunisie. Tunisie. Uh, they don't. They don't have tunas in there. They're not named after tuna. Mm. Wouldn't it be good if there's a place called Codland and Placeland <laughs> and Chicken Kievland. <laughs> well, I'd, there is a place called Kiev. I'd like to go to a place and eat it. So that would be that'd be really funny, wouldn't it? Mm-hmm. Do you think? Yeah. Nineteen. Kiev and Kiev. 19, I, I believe in you. Nineteen sixty-five. <laughs> well, come on. Now. <laughs> Cosmonaut called Alexei Leonov became the first man to walk in space. Cosmonaut. What a good word. Cosmonaut. He Hail walked comrade. for 12 minutes. Sounds Alexi. better than astronaut, doesn't mm. it? 12 minutes. So, um, you know, 12 minutes. What can you do? Oh, um, out of order again. Sorry, people. Uh, 1961, South Africa left the British Commonwealth. Mm. Uh, so mm. This is obviously um, to, due to, um, you know, immense differences over apartheid. Mm. Um and of course, it's very good now that they're back. And as we've discussed, you know, South Africa, I think South Africa and Britain have never been closer. And of course, we have enormous numbers Lots of, of South Africans, South Africans living, living There's one in my over village. Here. We love you, South yeah. Africa. We do. We like uh, you very much. It's a country I've grown to hugely uh, respect. I, I like the maybe. people, I can tell you that. You mm, like the people, I, I yes. do too. <laughs> <laughs> in uh, 2003, the US and UK coalition invaded Iraq. Iraq, even after mm. the Kuwait, after um, after Iraq obviously invaded Kuwait. Mm. Uh, why? Because they um, they wanted the oil, and Saddam Hussein didn't think that we would 
inter- Fair enough. intervene. And of course, again, Q8 in itself had been um, owned by Britain. Mm-hmm. I was, I've been to Q8 because of Uncle Johnny. You uh, loved it, didn't you? I loved Q8 a lot, actually. Yes. Um, 2013, uh, NASA's Mars rover um, discovers further evidence of water bearing minerals mm-hmm. on the planet. So, very interesting, this. Mm. Um, I think Callum and I will have to do a show one day where we actually have a serious discussion about life and things. Mm, I don't you know, whether it's yeah. life and and which which planets and um, even Ceres, for instance, which is mm. um, which has now been upgraded to the same status as Pluto, for instance, which I think is ridiculous. There's a good Rush uh, song called Ceres as well. Yeah, Ceres is a very interesting uh, body in itself, actually. Mm. Um, 2018, the last one today. Uh, a NASA study shows that. Um, oh, so sorry. <laughs> Should read read before I start. So, uh, 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 an astronaut called Scott Kelly uh, went into space, and a study of his DNA uh, after this uh, showed that he was no longer identical to his twin. Yeah, I remember hearing that. Yeah, uh, mm. after one year in space, I remember uh, hearing that. Seven yeah. percent of his genes have been altered. That's mad, isn't it? So, isn't that just absolutely crazy, people? Crazy. So. Hope you enjoyed On This Week in History. Uh, and I'm nearly perfect today because it's four minutes and 56 seconds. Oh, yeah, and baby. we're going into great song. <laughs> the Doobie Brothers, listen to the music. You must do on Aspen Weight Radio because we play the best. Aspen Weight Radio podcasts. Educate, entertain, enjoy.